The Cosmic Egg. <laughs> That's what today's reading is going to be about. I saw this card. It's from the Animal Spirit Wild Unknown Oracle. When I was getting ready in my bathroom, I don't know why they always give me downloads in my bathroom. I saw this card in the Cosmic Egg. What I The message that I got is something is about to hatch. And then I was shown the cosmic egg. Because if I just got the message something is about to hatch, that could be anything. That could be like, oh, an idea is about, it's about to come to fruition. Um, whatever. But with the cosmic egg, there's a much deeper message within this. And I'm going to be, we're going to get three cards. I'm going to be using the Wild Unknown Tarot. I haven't really used this since the start of my tarot journey, and I feel like that's significant as well. Because with the cosmic egg, it's something that goes back a while. This is not just something you've been thinking about casually on the side. There's something about to hatch, and I think it's from within us. We'll, we'll get a couple cards and see. Yeah, judgment, exactly. Oh my God, Santero also just put out a video. Um, I think it was a Capricorn reading that deeply freaking resonated with me. I'll, I'll, I'll link it down below because this is the thing. With Sans readings, okay, I'm not going to go into that. I watch them all is my point. It doesn't matter if you're a Capricorn or not. She had a reading about like a flock of birds and basically what i'm gonna leave this out because this is part of the message thank you san see i love to work with other tarot readers i love i love to work with other shaman and mystics that that's what i'm about but anyways <laughs> love and light a lot coming through in this energy because of all these birds i link the reading down below it's a capricorn reading and it's talking about a flock of birds and basically what she's saying in that reading is birds are messengers and this dovetails perfectly my message. <laughs> it's the same energy, I should say. Regarding our guides giving us signs, sim symbols, and synchronicities, which we're all very, we're all very spiritual people here. We're all very used to that. We're all always kind of keeping our antennas up, like looking for answers with the sun here. But interesting that it was in the reverse. Yeah, there's something here that's about to come to light and be revealed from within us all. It's like the magician here, it's like this magician is looking for the light, looking for the answer. And in that reading that San put out, and I've been thinking about it since I watched it yesterday, like it's been replaying over and over again in my mind. Over and over again. <laughs> Remember that old Nelly song? It's been playing and playing because there is a message here with these birds. It's like in her reading, she was talking about somebody, the collective, was following this flock of birds, their guides in a particular direction, and they were like running towards a new goal. Look, we have the sun in this deck as well. We have two suns. Maybe one was a false light and one was a true light, but that's for another reading. <laughs> Love and light do all. I, I can't say I haven't done it. This is this is the thing. I've done it a thousand times. <laughs> and look at the rays on this card as well. We've been looking on... We have been wanting to manifest something, birth something, cosmic egg... This is destiny based with the judgment card and we have been waiting for signs, symbols and synchronicities and when we see that that flock of birds is flying, that was her reading, we're going after it and nothing and nobody is going to stop us even if we have to leave people behind. That was like the, the point of her reading but this was the interesting thing is that the birds that were so active, messengers, guides, information, synchronicities, downloads, all of a sudden, they became extremely quiet right when we as a collective got to that finish line, right where we were about to supposedly hatch. It's almost as if we took a double take and turned around because it's like we realized that we had left something behind. Four for four, as I'm saying this. For some people, it might be a person because four is the emperor for me. For others of us, it's like we, it's, it's, it's not even about, oh, shoot, we left something behind. We're so sensitive 
to this flock of birds. I just, I love that this reading is coming through because Sans readings speak so freaking deeply to me. I literally sit and cry listening to her readings because she's tapped, she's not tapped in in a way of like, I'm going to do a Capricorn Zodiac tarot reading. She's tapped into the collective. Anyways, that <laughs> that's my review on San, okay? I've been watching her for a few years now and she's deeply impacted my life on a soul freaking level. Okay, shout out to Sam. Anyways. <laughs> you should always you should always share your feelings because you never know. Um you may never have you may not have another chance to to say them. My brother Mitch passed away last April and um there's just there's a lot of things that I wish that I had said. So I like to tell people that I love them and that they've impacted me. 555 five, five when I have the chance. So in her reading she talked about the fact that we were we were running after this bright light. This is something that we've been with the magician trying to manifest for some time. Interesting that I brought up the fact that I started working with this deck like three years ago when I first started really getting into tarot. And I haven't really worked with it since. Interesting that this could be even something that we not put aside but just have been trying to figure out how to hatch this thing how do we hatch this how do we say this how do we do this how do we represent this how do we become this dream this this vision of who we know ourselves to be who we are our mission with the star here and these these cards are left here in this order from my new moon in Aquarius reading that I put out just before this. Remember all of my new moon readings, the way that I the way that I read the new moon is it's it's going from the new moon all the way to the fruition of the full moon. So even though it's not the new the day of the new moon in Aquarius, I'm seeing this message, see how it's bleeding into this one. This new moon in Aquarius that we just had February 9th, it's going to the, the seeds that we have planted here are going to be birthed over the course of the fruition until like August 19th, I believe it is, of this year. So everything goes together, right? And, and I think that part of the things, and I'm going to get to these cards, guys. Sometimes I just got to open with the energy because I'm blasting in here with a lot of information. We have been trying to birth something. I just keep seeing that emoji with the, the egg, with the bird hatching out of it. It's like, see how this snake is wrapped around? And snakes, I see a lot of the time as like kundalini awakening. We could have had to, judgment as well, go through multiple awakenings. I'm seeing awakening upon awakening upon awakening within us in order to finally manifest with the magician the thing that we've been looking to manifest. Like, he's looking at the sun. How do I bring this out? How do I bring this forward? And maybe for some of us, we realize we were chasing after something false with the sun in the reverse. Or, you know, people talk about the false light, right? If you type in false light on YouTube, you'll, you'll see spiritual people talking about it. Regardless, let's get to card number one and see what we have here. Because when those birds, like we chase these birds, we're following our guides, we're following what we are, what our spirit is pinging for us to do. And then suddenly it just becomes eerily quiet. Silence. The birds have stopped moving. We are very sensitive to that. So we too have stopped. It's almost like a moment of silence or a moment of reverence. One time, a couple years ago, St. Germain appeared to me, which is like, the violent, the violet, violent, interesting, I said that, violet light, yeah, we're, we're entering into more violent times, I'm sorry, but, you know, that's just what it is, and we're going to need to strap in, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, we're gonna need to strap in, I'm not trying to put fear into your heart, I'm just saying, it could be things that are heartbreaking, it doesn't always have to be, like, war, it might be, but it, it, it could be something like, you know, we got to strap in for things that are going to break our hearts when it comes to people that we thought were like for us 
and they actually just weren't, or they're not supporting us, or we're telling them about these birds, and they're like, you're cuckoo. Okay, I will reconvene after because it's 11.55. <laughs> I gotta go to my core influence class. Shout out to Chris Rack and everybody in core influence. I love you guys. I will come back and complete this reading after. Hey guys. All right, I'm coming back. <laughs> Thank you for waiting. Oh, I gotta plug in my microphone. All right, I'm, I'm coming guys, I'm coming. Okay, so I just finished my core influence class link down in the description i would love for you guys to all join that seriously it's been life-changing and chris is relaunching it um i believe next week so i'd love for everybody to be there basically the course is just helping you with anything that you're doing on social media like if you're wanting i'm, I'm sure a lot of you are working on your own stuff right and chris really helps us to put our ideas together and um put out things into the world that we need to do like this is our mission this is <laughs> like I live this this isn't just like some spiritual tarot reading like I like Chris's course because it helps take this really dense spiritual stuff that's going on in the collective sorry I'm, I'm a little booby right now <laughs> in the in the collective and it 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 helps to make it more um like, well, how do we actually do this stuff, basically? It's like, okay, I'm a tarot reader. How the hell do I market this? How do I how do I do all this? How do I start a YouTube channel? How do I start a newsletter? Anyway, so if you're interested, it's always linked down in, in the description because I support Chris and all of his work. So anyways, back to what we were talking about with the cosmic egg. <laughs> this is the point of my message. I'm sorry that I get so mercury mind with you guys. I just have a lot to freaking say and I always come back around to the original point. I'm not just talking out of my ass for like 35 minutes. Okay. Cosmic egg. What I was hearing is that we are about to hatch something. And then I saw that emoji with the little bird coming out, which is this sun card. It's like this. It's like the kid coming out. It's like there it's I think it's a new version of us is being hatched or a way to look at it is a very very old version is being hatched I don't know why I'm so uncomfortable all of a sudden I'm like fixing my dress I think this is gonna make us uncomfortable some of this we may feel a little bit foolish as this begins to come out this being I think it's an aspect of us that is being hatched. <laughs> See, when I get fidgety like this, this is the energy. It's not just me. Like, everything in my readings are allegorical. I let myself come into the energy. I think we're going to be feeling kind of kind of slithery, kind of kind of kind of awkward, kind of like this is my purpose. This is how I'm representing this and we're going to get to the cards, guys. But like as an example, I was a Christian minister. Like, think Hierophant. That's what I was around for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Like, that... <laughs> and I'm doing this now, is my point. It's like, instead of getting my, my doctrine of, of theology, I'm reading cards. It's like, instead of sitting with a group of people talking about the Old Testament versus the New Testament law, and here's 25 reasons as to why, blah, blah, blah. It's like, that's why it's been uncomfortable for me, personal anecdote with this energy, cosmic egg judgment. That's why I've been so uncomfortable hatching this egg since my spiritual awakening in 2021 because I was on a path and I just saw three, four, five, three, four, five. I was on a th three point plan. I was, I was on my way with the fool. I was, I was moving toward, I was building up the, mi the ministry that I built from the ground up. I, and I was becoming successful and I was getting offerings every week that I was able to live off of comfortably. Like to the point where I was investing my money in the stock market and growing my money. And it was like, it was going awesome. And I was like, I'm helping so many people. And then boom, the birds stopped. And everything got real quiet. It got eerily 
silent, right? And that is when this Kundalini awakening happened within me. An angel appeared to me, spoke to me and said, we want you to stop doing what you're doing here. Imagine that I was, I built something. I was successful. I was making the most money I ever made in my entire life. I was, I was, I felt so good about myself. I felt like I was on my path. And then they were like, hold on, girl. Where are you going, girl? Girl, where are you, where are you going off to? But what I was going to say about St. Germain before, I didn't forget, was I had this um, vision a couple years ago of St. Germain. And he often comes in that violet light. And this is what he said to me. He said... I miss the reverence, you know, regarding like when in the Bible or the other many books that we have throughout time of, you know, the religions and such and people's accounts of angels and spiritual activity, usually what will happen is people will fall on the ground in reverence and worship God, worship fall down on the ground in awe and in reverence and he said to me I miss the reverence I I wish when when it used to be this way and and now there's so much pride there's so much we're so overstimulated we're so entitled that half the time an angel will literally appear to us and, you know, metaphorically speaking, I'm not even saying us. I'm just saying as a as humans. It's like in today's world, he was saying the way that people are now compared to how they used to be. He was saying, I miss the reverence. I miss when people were just like, okay, yes, that doesn't make sense. It, it, it seems foolish. It seems contrarian, Aquarius. It seems It seems actually a little bit maybe crazy even, you know, literally, like, like, there, it's like we're hatching this version of us that is maybe even a little bit uncomfortable for even us, and that's what I was trying to say before, this has been such an uncomfortable process for me in so many different ways, with the three of swords, literally the blood dripping for me is not an allegory. Trigger warning. Um, regarding me being shown this bright light and shown, Missy, you, it, we need you to do something a little different here, kid. We, we got something bigger than you even thought bigger than you dreamed or imagined yeah but what about the ministry I just built leave it it was like it was like they came to me in the middle of the night proverbially and were like leave everything well what, what about my clothes what about my life what about everything leave it come with us is how it felt and I slowly deconstructed my faith meaning I, I picked everything apart I didn't think I wasn't going to be a Christian anymore, but over two years time, it's like the birds were, they would, they would flare up and they'd guide me somewhere and then they'd get quiet and I would be like, all right, it's time for me to listen. It's listening season. The past few days, I've gotten real quiet. I've gotten real bored and I've just been sitting in my rocking chair, just listening just listening, because the birds, they they went quiet on me. I was like smashing forward on a, on a couple particular projects here on everything I'm working on, and the birds just got real quiet. So I'm like, okay, it, it's quiet time. All right, so let's let's see what the cards are. This reading is about hatching. I believe now as we've opened the energy of a new version of us that will even seem foolish. But as the scripture says, as the Bible states, if we want to get religious with it, right? 
the foolish things of the world. Things that are foolish to everybody else. Why does God the divine do that? Why, why does God make us look quote unquote foolish or different or stand out? God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise in order to bring change. Pluto and Aquarius. In order to break through the brick walls, the, through the walls of our hearts, the divine may have us looking real different coming up here. But that's what the change calls for on this planet. Card number one is the Son of Wands, the Knight of Wands. See, this is a forerunner energy. And see, there's that light again with the sun. It's like, and there's the snake as well. See, we've had, I, I believe we've had multiple awakenings in the collective with the snake energy, and we're going to have another one here. And it's almost as if, like, fireworks. It's like something is going to burst forward, and, and you're going to just go for it. This also reminds me of um, dandelions when you you blow the seeds. It's like we're we're about to be again with this multiplicity blowing these seeds. And every seed holds a message. These are these birds are messages. Every seed holds a message is what I'm seeing here. All right, card number 2 is the four of swords and look the sun is in his third eye or in this lamb's third eye and i see the lamb especially in this deck as a prophet energy that's what in this deck it represents is like the prophet the the voice of you know you know how in the bible it talks about like I'm going to I'm going to botch it, but it's something like the voice of babes. Like it will come the wisdom of the ages will will come through the voice of like the children, quote unquote. And that's coming through here again. Where are you, Lamb? There he is. Yeah, see how beautiful that imagery is. This is us here. We've gone through enough healing is what I want to say, which which is kind of a funny thing to, to say to people. Like, you know, everybody's on their own journey, right? I'm not saying, like, don't heal. I'm just saying for this particular collective that I'm speaking to, you're a collective that you – it's it's like with me, it's the same sort of a parallel of our stories, like how a couple years ago I had this spiritual awakening. I left my whole ministry behind. I started this whole metamystic thing, and I started with the cards, with my podcast, talking about my story and how I left my faith and everything after literally singing Kumbaya coming out of my mother's womb, right? It's like I feel what we're seeing is these parallels in the collective of people that have spent a lot of time in these this kind of healing zone as well as it's kind of reminded me a little bit of the hanged man here. It's like a hanged man energy of enlightenment. Literally here. Enlightenment. It's like we've through our suffering, through our pain, we have been enlightened. You know, I've I've had to separate, you know, from literally everything and everyone I've ever known and they have literally publicly even shamed me on my social media and stuff you know trying to make sure that they publicly state that they're no longer my friend and and that they're no longer my supporter since I've turned to tarot since I've turned to the devil you know that's what they say so but what I was gonna say with this is like we've healed enough well, I got to heal more before I, I, I go out and I plant these seeds into the world of, of the things that I've been shown. See, this is, this is double duty today. It's enlightenment for me. 
We've received enlightenment through our own pain, through our own healing so that we can go out into the world and heal others. It's like, <laughs> it's we know enough is my point with this. Card number three is the lovers. More birds here. It's almost as if we're becoming birds. We're becoming guides, I want to say, with this lovers. It's like, it's like again with this multiplicity energy. <gasps> There's birds on the sun card as well in the corners, and I just noticed. It's like all of a sudden, it's like things are going to be coming out of the corners. I just have this weird vision of like... <laughs> I, I'm th I'm thinking of this old Julian Noon's music video, um, "Build Me Up Buttercup." I'll I'll put it down below. It's a funny imagery. Like ever like she has she's sitting there with her ukulele and she's starting to play that song. Why don't you build me up, Buttercup, baby, just to let me down? And and as she's singing, all of these people behind her stand up and start singing as well. Like they were so blended into the environment, they were all like crouched down and then they come up at the chorus and they start singing. It's like as you start singing, as you start moving, as you start flying, as you start revealing who you are and what you've been through, sharing your story, revealing this cosmic egg hatching out into the world it's like all of a sudden all these other birds start why don't you build me up buttercup baby just to let me down they come out it's like all these uh, it's like every everybody was always in the background until you hatched it's like we're being backed we're we have guides that are guiding us and I feel like what's happening weirdly, not weirdly, I mean, this is just the natural state of things, right? It's like when you when you evolve to a certain level, you become the guide. That is how I'm seeing this lover's energy as well as this rainbow energy as well in the background. It's, it's this rainbow, rainbow. The cosmic gate has rainbow. That's what I'm seeing. It's this rainbow energy. And, and what is the rainbow? It's it's everybody. It's everything. It's 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 Aquarius. Where's my Aquarius? It's Aquarius. All the colors of the rainbow, all the hues, all the genders, rich, poor, every ethnicity, every every country, every state, every opinion, every viewpoint, every religion. It's like all of it and it's all the facets and all the stories of who we are it's like the akashic records bursting forth and it's like as we burst forth as we hatch again the other birds will emerge almost as if they were part of the background the entire time and it and others are experiencing that same thing as as they emerge as as you emerge I'm your choir. I'm behind you. It's like because it's all from the person's perspective. Everybody feels that choir rising up behind them and emitting this rainbow frequency. It's a high level frequency that I cannot get away from that is being sh that has been shown to me. It's this Pluto and Aquarius thing happening. <laughs> It's this Aquarian energy. I just keep seeing rainbows everywhere lately. Like it's it's all of us coming together as one, which is Aquarius. And it's shining our light in the world. And it's unique to each and every one of us. What this egg is, really the, the crux of the message here is we are hatching. I'll just say it one more time. We are really just hatching a version of ourselves it's this this child it's this this innocent energy that is cloaked in this rainbow this rainbow child is being birthed through us into the world it hasn't been tarnished yet it hasn't been it hasn't been ruined by society 
it's pure, it's true, it's cosmic. It's the cosmic egg. And we're hatching, man. That's what's going on right now. We are hatching. We are becoming the guides, is how I'm seeing this message. I love you guys so much. It's been Missy Gordon, the Metamystic here, and I will see you on the next one. Take care. Hey, baby, baby, try to find